And to find out more about Twitch and its sudden rise, I sat down with Chief Operating Officer Kevin Lin and began by asking him exactly how many people are watching Twitch. So Twitch reaches more than 45 million people every month around the world. Uh, and on a daily basis, we reach over 5 million people. Uh, the people are watching a lot of content. So the average person spends 106 minutes per day consuming content on Twitch. So the only three properties that um, push more bits on average than we do are uh, Netflix, Apple, and Google. And you're bigger than things like Facebook. Hulu, example. Facebook, Amazon, we push, we push more traffic than those guys do on average. How big is your audience compared to, say, you know, network television? On average, it's bigger, right? On average, we have over 350,000 concurrence on, on, the, on the website um, consuming gaming content. Uh, that's bigger than a lot of network television channel averages. I do know that some of the larger news networks like CNN have you know, between 800 and, and a million. Uh, we regularly peak at those numbers. How is Twitch getting this audience? A lot of the work we've done in the past uh, three years has focused heavily on the PC gaming community uh, and increasingly more so the console gaming community. Those communities each are, let's say, roughly you know, 200 million people or so. And uh, we're doing a lot of work to reach those audiences. Uh, mobile, though, is a big market. Over a billion people play mobile games. In theory, we're all kind of gamers. Anyone who owns a smartphone probably has played something before. Uh, and we really want to tap into that market. So we've done a couple of integrations there. Where we're, we're in the works with several. What's the global audience like, especially in China, too? Yeah, so globally, so over 45 million people come every month. It's the millennials. They like to sort of be in control of their own destiny when it comes to consuming content and entertainment. In China, um, it's really spiky. Um, so at, at a baseline, you know, several hundred thousand people come to the site every month. At peak, it can be in the millions. Uh, we, we, we notice that it comes during, particularly big, during big international events. Uh, a lot of the best players, the best professional gamers, are from China. Um, they come and win tournaments um, around the world, and they want exposure to that global audience. And a lot of the Chinese audience likes to watch uh, the Western players, and then, of course, the Chinese players as well, and sort of learn their strategies, understand the way they think about their, those games. Um, but we, we'd love to grow that audience over there. Explain it to the non-gamers out there. Why in the world would people spend hours a day watching somebody play a video game? It's you know, same reason why people watch other people play soccer and football. There's entertainment value in just consuming the video itself, but the real experiential thing around it is the interactivity. It's a social aspect. We think of Twitch as where gamers hang out, right? So it's not even just about the consumption of video. The video in itself is incredibly important. It's, it's the anchor, right? I might watch my favorite pro, pro gamer to get better at a game. I might watch a favorite pro gamer just to learn their story. How many broadcasters do you have and what kind of money can they make? So we have about 1.2 million unique broadcasters every single month. Of those, about a little over 6,000 are partnered. And the partner, partner process is an application process um, where you hit certain quantitative criteria. You reach a certain audience on average. So thousands make over minimum wage. Uh, and these are partners from around the world. So in, in many of their locales, they're making well over minimum wage. And they're making a very healthy living. Uh, but several make over $100,000 a year. Over $100,000 a year? $200,000? Over $200,000 a year, yep. And that's just on Twitch revenue. That's not even counting sponsorships and endorsements. Do we have any million dollar broadcasters? Uh, soon, yes. There will be soon some million dollar broadcasters. Wow, are they sort of like the Michael Jordan of video games? The interesting thing about Twitch is you don't have to be just the best player. Um, you also have to be a great personality. And some of the top players in the world might not attract the audiences of an average player, because that average player might be really excellent at communicating the way they think about the game, educating people, or they're just funny, right? You have to, you really have to craft your persona, your story around that experience. And if you are still scratching your head as to how playing video games online can be so popular, especially if you are a certain generation, I may fit that label, think about when Space Invaders, Pac-Man, or Donkey Kong became so popular at the arcade. Everyone would crowd around the best players to watch them amazingly move from level to level. But that sense of camaraderie somewhat disappears when everyone is just sitting at home playing their own video games. Twitch has brought back that sense of community in video gaming. You might think of it as a modern-day online arcade that's making people a lot of money. Michelle. Mark, that Donkey Kong reference is uh, aging us both. All right, let's focus on Twitch advertising revenue, clearly the key to its business model. But how else does the platform monetize? Do they have any other ways of generating revenue, Mark? 
They do have another revenue stream, which is subscriptions. Users can pay $5 to subscribe to their favorite channels. Those subscribers often get rewarded with features like chat badges and emoticons that give them a higher level of access to the broadcaster. It's like being a high-ranking member of a fan club. In fact, some subscribers hold special weekly sessions where they will only play with those who've subscribed. And that, to gamers, in Kevin Lee's words, would be like going to a playground where every Friday you have an appointment to play ball with Michael Jordan. Not a bad deal, Michelle. Absolutely not. Very serious business, all this gaming. All right, thank you. As always, Mark New, live in Silicon Valley.